We're building a wild pool system on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. We're doing all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls. Catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. This is the biggest storm, the nastiest storm we'll have had so far this season. This winter storm left as many as 13,000 Rocky Mountain Power customers in the dark, and some areas are still without power right now. Look outside, there's this snowstorm going on. We're at the tail end of finishing up the house, getting ready to move in. And there's been thunder and lightning during this snowstorm. The power just went out. But my house fired up and everything's running off the generator. So all the work for the house automation, just before we move in, we get to try it out. It fired up. We're, we're a week from moving in and we can still work. The whole neighborhood's down, we're powered up. So, I don't know, it could be any cooler than that. All that money, it's worth it. I just needed to do it one time, success. All the rest from here, they're freebies. <laughs> Back to work. All right guys, I didn't think we were gonna get any more snow this year, and I just finished both of the boilers, 750,000 BTU apiece, 1.5 million, running series and it's the first time i get to try turning on everything the ice melt the hot tub the pool the house heat everything all at once they ramped up and even though everything's cold soaked the boilers are already ramping back down because they've got everything up to temperature or warming at its max rate so this floor uh, it's already starting to get slushy and it's only been on for a few minutes so i'm super excited the hot tub's ready to go. It heated up crazy fast, like unbelievable. Uh, over a degree a minute, like every minute, one degree. It's so fast. So we turned it on in a few minutes. It was all ready to go. We got the fireplaces going. At least three of the seven, they're outdoors here. So I'm gonna go get a swimsuit on, go swimming, hot tubbing, see how long it takes for the snow to melt. I'm super excited. I'm not working now. Let's play. Tomorrow we'll get back to work. Hot tub. It's crazy to think I mowed my lawn yesterday. <laughs> closer and I cannot believe how many fittings and joints need to be done but I actually really enjoy it it's oddly satisfying thinking through all the plumbing I've got all my heat exchangers in 1.2 million BTU a piece I've got my safety flow gauges in if you look up here I got micro switches that measure to make sure there's a pool pump is running before it turns on a heater that way if I ever had a pool pump failure the heater wouldn't turn on without it and just heat soak this little room right here. So I've got backup on the micro switches. I've got my sacrificial metal in every single pipe so that the uh, water chemistry wants to attack that rather than the ladder on my pool. Um, this is three of the four different filter systems. There's another filter in there. The reason there's so many, well, one, it's a deep pool, it's got a lot of water, but still would require this many. Um, I've got this because I've got the pool zoned in different thermal climb temperature areas. So the deep part of the pool, the middle, the very top, I've got the suction and returns I put into SolidWorks to show where that water would travel and where to place those jets. So the deepest part of the pool, the water circulates. I may set that at 65 degrees. That would be this filter on this zone labeled deep end of the pool. 
and I can set it on that temperature and then just leave it so the bottom of the pool stays cold and I'm not paying to heat it. But anytime I'm doing free dry training up and down, we're used to thermal inclines anyway, so I'm just saving money. So I can't have the filters blend or I would blend that temperature zone. So I've got these different thermal client areas. The top of the pool has jets at the top, skimmers and suction that all loops only within itself. Totally separate pumps, which is why when you look at this room, you see so many pumps lined up all the way down. That's for the thermocline zone changes, so I'm not heating the entire pool, but I do get the benefit of all the filtering. So right now, I'm down to the final end. I've got cropped these up on bases. I didn't want to have all these pipes kind of jamming this up tight, so I raised it up. All the plumbing is going to go underneath these quartzite stands I built out of leftover tiles from the pool deck. So I've got my inlet, my outlet, and this bottom one that's teeing off can go two directions. I can close off this valve, this valve, open this, and empty this filter for service. So I'll plumb all of those together and run them out of drain. So if there's a lot going on in here. It's going really, really well. I have a lot more to do. That's a lot of talking. I'm going to get covered in even more glue. You guys know the drill. That's work. On this other side of the room, I've got all my water chemistry. So I am doing an automated chemical system. I don't want to babysit the pool a lot. I also don't want to have to coordinate having people go into the backyard, go up on top of my pool deck, which is right off my master bedroom. So I'm going to make the entire water chemistry fully automated and digitally controlled. So I've got multiple units here. Uh, it's because the pool zone, I need to treat the chemicals and zone that as well. Now, obviously the water is going to blend throughout all of the pool a little bit, but just like water thermal clients, there's hot and cold spots. Top of the water is hot, down near the bottom, you get the geothermal cooling effect and got 65. I want to try and make sure that my water chemistry is correct in different zones. That's why there's so many baskets here for acid and chlorine injection. The control system's here and it talks to a computer that then goes to my phone so I can check it, wash it, or even inject it from my phone. So all the pool chemistry is automated. There's a lot to this. Um, I hope that it doesn't give me any grief. I've, I've read a lot of great reviews about it. I've never tried it. Um, there's a lot going on. It actually has to take in these white lines, plumb in before the heater, return after the heater, run through this unit way up top, and that goes through two probes and they measure what the water chemistry is and displays it on the screen. So I've got one set of loops that's constantly feeding water through the system so it's always reading the chemicals live and then separate from that there's all the little black lines you see here here over there if you look way over here they actually tie in way up here i've got acid chlorine up top those are the injections so these are injection pumps and they pump the chemicals out of these barrels and after the filter the titanium heat exchangers, the pumps, the salt generators, everything we've got going on. You want to inject that high concentration chemical after all that equipment that's going directly into the pool. So that's why those lines are over there. So uh, plus there's all the communication lines, power lines, relays, uh, multiple communication, another communication back to the Pentair main control center. I feel like I could talk about this for hours and you'd be bored out of your mind. Um, it was a lot of work. I think it's going to work awesome, crossing my fingers, but uh, that's why you see so much in this room is I don't want to babysit my pool. I just want to check these baskets, fill it with the, chemi the chemicals, forget about it, come check it later, put the chemicals in, but I don't want to read it, check it, I just want to look on my phone, see that the water chemistry is perfect. So. That's why all this extra stuff, I got one more dude, back to work. All right, we're doing a cleanup of the pool. I'm sucking out the debris that settled to the very bottom during all the construction. Mike, <laughs> this is Mike Brotherson. 
He's got a dry suit on and he is gonna go down 27 feet to the bottom of the deep end. I don't want all the debris going into my new filters. So we're gonna suck it right out and into the streets. It's just got construction dirt and dust and I don't want that clogging all my new filters. So see down in there, dry suit, cold water, about to work. <laughs> it's a little cool. <laughs> yeah. Even in this thing, it's a little cool. Yeah, I think it was 51. <laughs> You're gonna lie to me and tell me it's 65. <laughs> it's 90. You don't need a. There we go. You don't need a wetsuit. Let's go. <laughs> The hot tub is 102 right now, so he could always jump to the hot tub to warm up. Anyway, this is kind of a preview of us almost being done with the house. We've got to get moved in, got to get a lot of furniture in. There's a whole bunch of little details on the engineering, little things we did that made a big difference on this house. I'm super excited to show it to you. We'll give you a whole tour and wrap up everything all at once when we're all done, but that's coming soon. For right now, that's to work.